So hello, today we are at Echoes of History, a military reenactment living history event in Retterton in Essex. And we're going to have a look around. It's a bit blustery today, but we'll, as usual, I'll do my best to capture the event. Where do we start? Let's have a look at some of the living history reenactors. So these gentlemen are reenactors for the Battle of Kursk in Russia. Photographs. 
don't want one or two odd soldiers getting carried away and charging ahead on his own. That's, that's not the way to do it. The Confederates attempting to drive them off. Now the unions are forming a firing line. Names, you know. But when I next next week, I'll be in Company K. I think it is the, um, the Palmetto Guards. So you're South a bit of a South freelance South. soldier, you are. We, we all we all yeah. Do, I've done uh, World War One German. Okay. Rifle volunteers, um, Victorian. So I'll do Anglo-Saxon and Viking. And I've done American War of Independence, Washington's Continentals. So yeah. Very few ever do one. Very few. Okay. I'll come and see you in a minute. Yeah, you can come over and see us. Uh, yeah. Danger Brigade! Without 
tumbling. Left, right. So this fine gentleman is going to explain the difference between the union, the uh, the colour and the standard flags. Yeah? Right. We'll start off with the union, commonly known as a union jack. It is only actually jack when it is on a ship, uh, preferably a battleship. That's where the jack came from. Moving on, we come to a colour. A colour is what belongs to a regiment. Every regiment has its own colour which dates back hundreds of years before radio communication. Okay. Because if somebody on a battlefield got separated from his regiment he only had to look around a battlefield, he would see his colours, he could rejoin his regiment. Then we come on to a standard. The standard is what I'm holding now. They are affiliated to a regiment, an association or the such like. It does not have to be military to be a standard. Okay. Would you mind if we saw your standard now? Is that possible? Yes. Unfurl it for you. Oh, fantastic. Okay, so this standard would represent the... This standard represents what it says on there. Essex branch. The Coldstream Guards Coldstream Guards at the top, yeah. Coldstream Guards. Can I ask you, did you serve a long time in the Coldstream Guards? I served for seven years. Okay. So you can wear the badge now with honour. Yes. Well, thank you very much You're for your welcome. time. Thank you. Yeah. You did? Yeah. Good. Who you are, Dad? Do you mind telling me your name? Yeah, my name's uh, Don Shepherd, uh, Royal Engineer, World War II, um, landing on D Day at. Uh, <coughs> can't think of the name of the beach. Juno. Juno, Juno, Juno yeah. yeah. Granddad, the parade's starting. I'm afraid that uh, you've got to do your oh, right. Yeah, sorry. come and see you. Yeah, like I said, but you wanted to move. So, shall we turn later. around and go? Bye. Is it windy?
Young man, we're coming back here. Good. Don't take microphone. Yeah, thank you, sir. Where did we get to? Thanks, sir, for coming over. It's a great <laughs> honour to meet you. That's okay. Great honour. Yeah. How do you find it today? The occasion. Um, I think it's great because um, there's not many of us left now, and um, the people that run this place here um, is the future in Essex of um, of their um, of, of what, what we can portray as us veterans of uh, 1944 thank you mate uh, but not only brass veterans but all those that fought after World War II yes. Afghanistan and places like that since. Yeah. How do you feel about watching uh, the D-Day Remembrance every year on television? Well, is it, is it I used to be able to travel over there and next year will be the 80th yes. and uh, I can't travel that distance or I can't go to the Arboretum in the middle of it. You know? Where did you serve? Was it Juno? Yeah. Juno Beach? I was a Royal Engineer and uh, we landed uh, in support of the Canadians uh, that um, done the actual landing you know, the t and uh, we was getting really um, by German artillery was banging them into us but um, do you want to sit down? no I'm not you sure? you okay the wheelchair's just there if you want to carry on the interview in the wheelchair. I can meet you over there if you wish. No, I'm all right. Yeah, well, well, well the plan is we can, he can come and interview you at your memorial. All right. Okay, all right. <laughs>
Would you like to take home some information on Don? Thank you. Wow. Yeah, I've got a nice medal, sir. Oh, oh really? That's lovely. Do you live local? I'm living great in East. So we've had this memorial. Memorial Bill, Fran has done it actually. So the Canadian Bill has been due day commemorations and memorials like on the 6th of June or on Remembrance Day. So that would be really important. We were supporting the Canadian Bill. Yeah, people really want to know. Exactly. I don't know at all. No, but just to tell you, you've had some great events. We need to get this set up for this year. Yeah, we've done it in the 103. So this fine memorial is in honour of the troops that landed on D-Day, the beaches, Sword, Juno, Gold, Utah and Omaha, 1944. If we look we can see each of these stones honours the, each of the beaches. have a memorial here for the parachute regiment. There is an interesting one. This is the uh, this is the branch, the South Essex branch of the parachute regiment. And we're going to try on. Well, I'm going to attempt to put the parachute actually off. Go on, it. Yeah. 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 Okay. Leg steps come up. Yep. Well, I have. <laughs> Is that heavy? Uh, I reckon it would be after a while. <laughs> <laughs> it does get lighter. Yeah. <laughs> Get in, you bugger. Is you it turned? Is it turned? Have you got it through their harness? Is it? That's it. Have you told them about uh, attaching the container to the trailing leg? The container. Just down here. Yeah. Alright, okay. Well, it's probably one of these. That's it. Is that right? No. Yeah? yeah. No, well, something's wrong. Something's wrong. Hold on. 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 Hold Oh, 
Oh, there you go. Get it in? Yeah, see, I can join the powers here. This guy. Yeah. Oh, there you go. There. Oh, I feel like jumping out of the plane. I'm on the edge now. That's where I was. That goes in there. That goes in there. That's it. Hey! Alright, hold on, hold on. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Alright. Put your reserve I'm on. ready. Alright, oh, look at this weight. Reserve goes on the top. It's upside down. It's upside down. Can we hold that? Oh, yeah. Oh, no, don't yeah. Top. Better not pull that. Put it on the top hook. On. Then they've got a fight, haven't they? After doing all this, that's got they ain't gonna reach. Right, and then you've got your equipment, this goes on. This goes on the second bottom set of hooks. That's a weight, isn't it? Never not laugh. Got them on? Oh, oh yeah, now we can feel right, it. Oh. Then sits up there. Okay, and when you jump out the door, your hands are in the front. I like this. Hold on to that. Yeah. So what's the weight of this? We've well, got no weight. There's no weight That's in that, but you'd have all your kit in there. Which so you've got all your kit? Probably 80 pounds. So and your rest. kilo? That could be up to 100 odd pounds. Right, so that's about 50. That's about 26. Cool. And that's 30 odd on the back. So it's like carrying a man, isn't it? Then you've got your helmet. Yeah, you've got your helmet, yeah. you've got your weapon. Then you've got to get from one ammunition. front of the aircraft to the... So the when, you, when you're lined up, so you're lined up in the plane, if you're going out the door there, yeah. it's, um, you go forwards, rear... Oh, okay. Jumping, okay. Like this. Yeah. And yeah. then you've got this hand here, yeah. up here on your strop. Right, yeah. So you go up, and as you turn into the door, you give that to the jump master, right, and you go out the door. Wow. Fantastic. You do it a lot? You do many jumps? I was here for 23 years. Oh, right. So you're used to this weight. So you're yeah. to run him out then? <laughs> yeah. Now, I suppose you get conditioned, don't you? They build you up for it, oh, make yeah. you strong. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Obviously, and so you then can when, the once you're out underneath your canopy, you've got to release your container. Yeah. So these two hooks, you put a thumb in each side. Yeah. You just push these down. So just get back down. Yeah. So yeah, you can actually do it. Put it away. I'll do it so. That's it. Because you'd, you'd have a, an 18 foot bit of rope. How did you do that? Just clip that. Push, push that. Down. Oh, sorry. Yeah, push down. that down. All right. Let's see what I do. Come here. Oh. Yeah. Right, so look. See that bit there? Just push it down. That's it. Oh, right. And that's yeah. all. That'll drop away below you. Yeah. On a. 18 foot of line, yeah, and that's dangling underneath you. So that hits the that ground, is the ground so and a couple of seconds, a second later you hit the ground. Cool, my goodness. So you're going to get that dropping yeah. first. Yeah. And, then, and then the fun begins, because what you've got to do then is collapse your canopy. Yeah. Yeah. Take all this off. Yeah. So you take that off. So yeah. Spin, spin the wheel on your thing. No one there. No, this. Turn, oh, yeah, yeah. Turn that and punch it. Punch it. Hey. That's it, you're out of there. Yeah, you get to kick them out. Yeah, while you're in here, yeah. yeah, or on the ground. Yeah. That's it. Take that off. That's it. Wow, that's something. All your cat is laying out on the floor. Wow. Get your rifle out. Yeah. Let's do some put a, put a magazine on it, cut weather. Wow, you've got to think quick and probably in the dark as well. Yeah. In bad weather. Yeah. And then on an exercise you would uh, you would have to you jump with a green bag down your front of your smock. And um, you would get hold of the apex of the, the canopy, spin it round, walk it up, like that, like you were told them. Yeah, yeah, spin. like this, yeah. And then, and then everything goes in the green bag. Yeah. So you'd have your rifle, and then you'd have your, your Bergen. So that, that rucksack's called a Bergen. And you put that on your back, put the green bag on, on top, carry uh, your rifle, or whatever weapon you've got with you, might be a, oh, uh, a GPMG, yeah, machine gun, or whatever. Big, yeah. And then you have to, with all that kit, so you know, so you've got at least 90 pounds, and then all the rest of it, then you've got to double off of the DZ, which could be a mark 
anything up to a mile away, depending where you've dropped on the field. Do you know what I mean? Because you have a, yeah. an RV which you have Can to I just get that on the film? Is that alright? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so you're saying you've got double up to a mile or whatever. Wherever you... Yeah, so so you've you've landed. Yeah. Yeah. You've collapsed your canopy to stop you being dragged all over the DZ. Yeah. Um, your first SOP is to get your, your weapon out, your rifle out, make it make it ready. Then yeah, you start, you know, you have a assessment of what's going on, yeah, because you've got to get off of that DZ because there'll be people dropping on top of you. Yeah, you're a marked, you've marked the, the site, haven't you? So by landing there. Yeah, but what happens is there, there won't just be one drop. There'll be drops coming in continuously because they'll they'll fly around because they can only get so many. Uh, um, parachute is out uh, yeah. in one go yeah, cool. so you'll have lo lots lots of different uh, chalks coming in or sticks so uh, then what you would do then is you, you jump with a big green bag down the front get the end of your canopy the, the apex of your canopy wind it up walk it in on your arms stick it in the bag yeah get all your kit on put your green bag on you've got your rifle in your hand and you have to double off of the DZ. Wow. And depending where you are on the DZ, because um, you could be half a mile, maybe even a mile away from uh, the your designated RV rendezvous point, uh, and you have to double with all that kit. So you, you know. So hence, it's not hence e it's not easy. That's why you've got to be fit. That's why the, the military makes sure you're up to standard. Yeah. Because it, you know, it is hard, especially uh, if you're carrying a mortar barrel or a mortar bi bipod or base plate. You've got a couple well, of bombs. Could be a radio man, I guess, couldn't you? Signals or something. Yeah, well, by f by far, the heaviest kit uh, that you would drop with would be in a mortar platoon. Oh, well, of course, mortars. Yeah. Uh, everything else, all these like light, light guns and stuff like that, they would be dropped as what they call heavy drop. Um, but you know, with with the the mortars, you jump you jump with a piece of the mortar, either the bipod, the base plate, or uh, the barrel. The barrel was really awkward because it's like sort of this high, mm -hmm. and it's really heavy. And when you let your when you let your equipment, you know, when you let your equipment go, yeah, yeah, you really feel it tug on. Yeah, you I can when, imagine you've got 18 foot line going. Yeah. But yeah, so that's uh, that's. Well, thank you very much. I think a lot of people will be interested in that. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. And as you said, the first thing you do is get your weapon off so you can defend yourself. Once you've got your weapon, then you worry about the rest of the stuff. So this this bit here as well, um, this is your uh, what quick you call release. your jet jets jets and device. Quick release, quick, quick release device. Yeah, quick release device. Right. So you can jettison. That goes it's on. It. It. There's a it depends what side of the foot, aircraft you come. There's at. 18 foot of rope on that. It's attached to that. You untook that. That then goes in there. In between there, your 18 foot of rope. And then if for, for whatever reason you need to detach yourself from your container, which is this. Only one, from uh, you can well, pull that, and it will. It will jettison that load. That jettison that load. So you're going to be. But lighter. obviously, what I was saying about uh, um, already people on the DZ and stuff like that, you can imagine one of these over 100 pounds landing on a a, a, a paratroop Z. Oh. It, it might it might be sore for a couple of days. <laughs> you're not wrong. Oh.
And if he's jumping with a stain gun, okay, that'll be off. Oh, the stock's not on it yet. Right, that, that comes off. And that'll be, the magazine will be off. And that'll be strapped onto you there. So when you land, you knock your teeth out. Right. Magazine on. But on, you're ready to defend yourself. That will be your first action then, to get your weapon loaded. Yeah, no, always, yes. Always. Yeah. SOP. Yeah, SOP. Yes. And the thing is, you'll be hanging on to the strop in the aircraft for 10 minutes, quarter of an hour, while the pilot's slow. So you get achy on? Yeah. And by the time you landed, your arms ache. Well, no, it's bruised because the oh, uh, dispatcher will whack your hand off it. And the guy on the other side, they grab hold of you and throw you out as well. Because you're not actually jump. Right. With, with this, it's not put across the top. Right. That'll be off. You tie your stock onto that. That'll be tucked away in your equipment. And your weapon will be underneath your reserve. Right, strapped onto you. So you got you can use your reserve canopy if you need to. Incredible. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Well, I hope you enjoyed that about the paratroopers. Uh, There's a lot to think about there, and the, it shows the immense weight. Sub to Mr. Beast. Sub, oh, also, sub to my channel. Oh, oh, so now it seems that I've uh, <coughs> stumbled across the Red Army, the Soviets. So now we are in the Russian camp. Alexander, you what you have already increased. You didn't finish it. You started to finish it. Yeah, this is the original songs from that time. The original what? Original songs from that time, 41-45, okay. yeah. Really? Yeah. Just modern interpretation, but yeah, it is. It is the that age song. Yeah. So what are, what are you cooking there? This is a soup. It's called in Solanka. So all the meat, everything is just going there. Solanka. Solanka, yeah. Solanka. This is more like a soup. Gulash is more like. So that will be uh, vegetables and sausage. Yeah, yeah. This this kind of the meat. A meat, yeah. Gravy. Potatoes normally. Yeah. This is like a soup, yeah. Mushrooms, right? Different kind of meat. And lemon. Four or five different kind of meat. So you've got a demo, you've got a, a whole display of the weapons that you would have used. Yep. So this will be used by the Soviet forces, not just Russians. They had everyone in Lithuanians, Ukrainians, Georgians, you name it. So everyone would be given basic training 
you'll be given one of these they'd have actually almost anti-tank rifle companies within a regiment they would deploy them in like not one at a time but in sixes the idea was even if you couldn't actually shoot up a tank because they're getting too good for their armor you could actually persuade the morale to crack them if you've got six of these being bounced off you every minute you think something's going to get hit that's important let's clear off out so even when they past their use of anti-tank rifles they were used to knock out hard targets like pillboxes bunkers wow build, so, buildings so, so sorry what would that actually go through in terms of concrete thickness It'd go through a foot of concrete a foot of concrete yeah so these are the actual that's your rifle round and that's your anti-tank round oh my goodness and that's is that armor piercing yes oh my goodness yep they have specially hardened tips so if you were behind a wall, you had little chance? Well, you'd fire, if there was a German behind a wall, you'd fire at him through the wall. Through the wall, <laughs> okay. So, and this went everywhere where the infantry battalions went. So, in the middle of a Russian steppe where there are no vehicles at all, you've got these babies, anything the Germans can think up, and even bring up lorries and things which can get there. The lorries can be knocked out with anti-tank rifles. So they, in an infantry company, quite often less because they'd actually get knocked out but it would be broken down to be carried by three men you'd have the, the biggest guy in your unit would be carrying the base plate another at the barrel another the bipod and then every soldier to do with it would be carrying one of these boxes with three of the mines in there now okay we'll gypsy artillery because again you know this is pretty good as artillery goes, very good against troops in the open. No good really against tanks. Wow. You'd be very lucky to knock out an armoured fighting vehicle with a, a mortar. But yeah, you might do something to the tracks. And the weight of them, they're, yep. they're substantial, aren't they? And that's the 82. Two, um, by your right foot, that's the 120. Now that's not with the companies, that's with the regiments. Oh. So that is literally regimental artillery. And you can see those being used in Ukraine today. It's got to be 20 kilo. Yeah. Now those would knock out tanks if you dropped it on the top because they've not got much armor on the top and on the sides, you know, again, you could get track hit. So they're very, very useful. But you, you couldn't actually hoik those around with an infantry rifle company. You, they literally have wheels on to be towed. So light vehicles, attack, uh, jeeps and things, I'll tow them. So you could put a Russian, sorry, you couldn't put a Russian round into a German mortar, which helped hugely. Oh, I've got a cup. Yeah, problems there. Well. Lunch. Yeah. 7 to 32 megahertz. Output powering 1 watt. And the modes of operation are FM or mode requires 2.4 VDC batteries and 280 VDC batteries. Origin ex Soviet Union. Yeah. Hmm? Oh, Alright, shall I order some pizza? Okay. No, because. So, can you explain your outfit here? All right, we're uh, Panzer Lehr. Uh, it's a group made up for the Normandy landings. Based, oh! Um, we're we're uh, Panzer Grenadiers. We're a mobile infantry. Were you drafted in towards before D-Day? We, because Panzer Lehr, the Lehr is teach. So right. we were the teachers in the schools. Oh, okay. They were oh. teaching young recruits. Oh, really? Yeah. You're the, you're really, they're getting desperate. Yeah, we're getting desperate at that time. Okay. So they made us up as a big unit, Panzer Lehr. We had the best equipment of the best. 
Um, the SS hated us because of that, because of that, basically. Um, oh, what? Because you had the best because equipment. We had the best, yeah. And you've done, you done the least fighting. Well, I wouldn't say the least fighting. We well, got, against the obviously the. Uh, well, we was we was at Normandy, so we yeah. Uh, yeah. We didn't actually see the invasion, but we was at Khan, around Khan area. Okay. Yeah. Um, and we we sort of fought a, a retreat in action from there, basically. So. Yeah, we're we're a, basically we're a group that uh, is behind the lines at the moment, so we're at rest. It's a group at rest, recovering from the uh, battles from that we. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the battles that the uh, Americans have thrown at us. Basically. Okay, <laughs> so you still got an easy number? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I think we so. Try. At the end, we try. <laughs> so this um, cooking device, I've not seen yeah, that before. Yeah. Is that a standard? That's, that's really, that's quite yeah. clever, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, it will yeah. be kept warm. Yeah, I Whatever see that. It's like radiates yeah. across, isn't yeah. it? Nineteen forty four. This is an original, is it Cuba wagon? <laughs> See all the equipment? Yeah. Is it better equipment? Much, much better. I think we learned. Much, much better. Yes, I think we learned that. And so we were we had we were fighting with work. Yes. Yes. Thanks. Thank you. Really nice Thanks, to meet you. Thank you for everything you've done. No problem. You... Okay, young man. First of all, I'm going to say nice to meet you. Very proud to meet you. Lovely, nice. Yeah, it's a great honour. It's a real honour. Really. So I know we went for it again. Um, explain what you did in, in, in D Day, if you don't mind, for the viewers that will be watching. Well, D Day, uh, Monty brought us back from Sicily uh, to. I was in the 51st yeah. Island Division and uh, we were to take part in the DJ Land. Okay. 
and we uh, we were stationed at London on Wanted Flats. Oh, right, Wanted? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And on the uh, evening of, of the 5th, um, <coughs> we were taken down to the docks and uh, we were put on uh, an American, what they call American Liberty ship. A Liberty ship, okay. It's quite a big ship, was it? That's right, yeah, and it had all of us on it and we went down the Thames, uh, picked people up at Tilbury. Okay. Well, it's not far from me. Yeah, yeah. Sussex, isn't it? And then we it? started to go through the Straits of Dover, uh, where the uh, Germans had got heavy artillery on the coast, and they took out the, bit, bit the uh, boat behind us. Oh, so that must have been very nerve-wracking for was, the troops. Yeah, we was in one in front, and we was getting struck by. Uh, German fighters, you know. Oh, right, okay, so and, you got um, them. yeah. That, the fever's, the sea was very rough. But eventually, we reached a, a place where you transferred over to Lanning Park. Can I just go back to the, the weather? Because there was a there was a small window, wasn't there, of the... Oh. It was very rough for quite a few days, yeah, and you got, the a, boat, you got a bit I'm, of a, a window. I wasn't a good sea traveller. No, no. And no, uh, you're, land, you're a soldier, weren't you? Yeah, so, that's right. Yeah, I think they should have gone the day we, before. Um, I think yes, they should have gone yes. the day before. Yeah, it was... Uh, we, um, anyway, we arrived at... Well, you arrived. Well, they called it Piccadilly Circus. We transferred over to a landing pub. Oh, OK. And uh, the boats were going up and down. And something we had never learnt before was to go down a rope ladder. Oh. Off a boat. OK. And a lot of the guys were falling in. Yeah, go on, you keep talking, I'll get you. Yeah, go on, I'm, I'm listening. Yeah, a lot of the guys were falling in the water and... Uh, <coughs> they were pulled out, fortunately, and then we transferred over to this liberty to... Uh, Oh, well, you're talking the landing, the landing craft. Yeah. And we arrived at Juno Beach, and the noise behind us. We got, we had our big guns, oh, wow. navy, firing yeah. over the top it was incredible. Must have been Germans, something that you never, right. never forgot in your. That's right. You never forgot and that. We had rocket, rocket ships there firing, mm. in. and we arrived at Juno Beach, and uh, the tide had. Uh, just about got in there, wasn't it? So it was, to land was to go through the water onto the beach. Oh, okay. So when you went, so can I just ask you, when you went into the water, how deep was it? Was it for you? Because you've well, got no, because oh. we, we were we had vehicles on our. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I was on a, I was a Royal Engineer. We had vehicles. Right. So now. you went actually with the vehicle. Yeah. On so the, the, the first was a staff car that went off, and it. It disappeared under the wall. Oh, that's the officers, is it? Yeah, officer and the oh, driver. Okay. And it, it, deep down, anyway, they got out all right. There was no problem. And I was in a scout car. Yeah. A little scout car uh, up on a turret with a sting and and um, wow. driver, just two of us. And my driver, he hit the water like. Formula One, <laughs> it? it's a bit enthusiastic, was oh. it? <laughs> we was all uh, all way. our vehicles were waterproof, so yeah. it didn't. Anyway, uh, we managed to. Uh, but the, the theme really was to get off the beach as quick as you could. Of course, yeah. Loads of uh, Canadian uh, guys that were dead laying about on. The, you know, and it was not nice to see. Not nice yeah. to see. Yeah. And we got up there and uh, got up onto uh, a level uh, past the buildings up high. Mm. And then um, I was in a brigade and our brigade commander managed to get up to the Canadians who was in front. They were doing well. They were, they were actually on the way to try and captured the city of Khan. Oh, I know Khan, yeah, yeah, so you basically linked right. up with the Canadians. Yeah. Okay. And uh, anyway, the Canadian commander said to our bloke, um, we're all right, you don't need to. We were directed um, back to a German radar station 
uh, to try and take that out. But we, okay. We failed to do that. Oh, you didn't? No. So was that a firefight? Did you get well, into a big fight? Well, one of the, uh, I think it was a black watch or somebody, a wedding really. Anyway, then we were directed to go to uh, what they then called Pegasus Bridge. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, Seen a lot about it on television. Yeah, because what, what happened really, uh, uh, if, I don't know if you know with the history, is that the Germans thought <coughs> we were going to land in Calais area. Yes, I did. So all their armour was stacked up. Yeah, there. in the wrong location. So directly they knew we had landed in Normandy, they directed their armour to come down and try so to you push it out. tanks and so on on the so way they down could to go on the beach, yeah. And um, it was a pretty tough time around there, but eventually all my division landed on there. And uh, But we had a very unfortunate incident with the Black Watch. Um, as I was in the Scottish Division, they uh, started an attack uh, to, from Ramville to another French, and the Germans had their troops in a ditch. Oh, okay, concealed. Concealed. Oh, okay. And they got up, and the first platoon got actually wiped out. Really. And then. We, they, they had men on the what they called the left flank, and they were captured about six or eight of them. <laughs> and they were stood up on the wall and shot. Okay, tragic. The whole thing, isn't it? Yeah, it's horrible, isn't it? Yeah, they did. Yeah, it's horrible. The commander of the uh, was a Nazi, somebody or other. He was uh, very bad man. Anyway, yes. fortunately, yeah. one of the guys who didn't get wounded very much. He managed to feign death. Oh, okay. And uh, at the end of the war, he gave evidence against the commander of this. Oh, wow, okay. At the and, trials, uh, yeah. yeah. And the guy uh, oh, goodness. was found guilty and uh, Just dealt with. They uh, hung him. Hung they hung him, him yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was a bad time. I can imagine. But really in that area it was tough really, we never actually, um, all the divisions that were fighting that area were nearly broke out till this August, this month actually, on our way uh, up the east coast. You know? Okay, wow. So this, 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 these, uh, these events must bring back memories for you, perhaps? Or? Well it's funny. Yeah. I can remember all that, but I can't remember things that happened today. Yeah, you've got a long-term memory, yeah. That's right. So can I ask you uh, what you did uh, after the war? What was your trade? What did you, obviously, you, you well, survived the war? Well, uh, as they called it in them days, I was um, something master of none. Oh, you was a uh, jack, of, jack of all? Uh, yeah, I know what you mean. Well, jack yeah, of all, but master of none. It was very tough when we come out. Yeah, as England was being rebuilt. That's right, you was out of work and... Yeah, sign on the Labour Exchange. Oh, okay, so not easy and, times, uh, yeah. They offered you a job, and if you didn't take it, you didn't get any Labour money. What know? did they offer you, do you uh, remember? And they directed me, I worked at Ford at Dagenham. Oh, did you really? So yeah. You worked in Essex, in Dagenham? Yeah. On the cars? That's right. Did Stay you there for some time, and then I had loads of other jobs. So like a lot of people, you, you went from job to job? Yeah, I mean, they were just things. starting oh, yes. to build a new town and Bazin. Yeah, that's right, so yeah. Bazin, yeah. Bazin, yeah. Jobs, Brick, carrying bricks up, big loads. So he's a hod carrier? Yeah, hod carrier. <laughs> well, maybe that's why you're 103, eh? Yeah. It could be something to do with hard work and a bit of luck, I guess. I know, a lot of luck, I guess. Yeah, a bit tough time, really. But... And I see you've got your lovely family here today. Well, they, this is something that I look. There's, there's quite a few of us left mm. who this year, uh, on the 80th, won't be able to travel to Norway. No, I can imagine. Or it's to a, our. It's uh, quite a long. Or the one in um, Germany, Staffordshire, yeah. but um, I think it's going to be. Uh, Hello. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's. Um, I think Fran and her husband have done a fantastic job here. And a lot I want to yeah, see. Oh yeah, of course you can sit. I want to see this um, uh, for next year anyway. I'm going to go there next year. 
You are. I'm going to go there you. with my friend. Yeah, I'll, I oh, want right. to see all the beaches. Yeah. I've been there before, but I'd like yeah. to meet some more veterans if, if they can make it. I'd just like well, to see the... I don't think there'll be veterans. There'll be a, but, not so many. Um, a lot of us olders can't make it. You know? Yeah. So we're, I've, I've spoke to Fran and we're going to... Have a big do here. Okay. Would you like some? Would you like me to bring you back a little bit of sand from the beach? June? Is it Juno? No. Yeah, you're I've right. Got enough sand. You got too. enough sand. Have you? <laughs> you probably have over the years. Yeah. But anyway, I'll think of you when I'm down there. Yeah. I'll leave you to it because this, this, this young lady much, wants to have yeah. a chat with you. I must tell you, I've just had some people from Holland that rang me up and uh, knowing that I was on Juno. And they have been to normally and they've taken bottles of oh, sand. Oh, well, you've got loads bottles of sand. Of sand <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> got enough for a sandcastle, yeah. yeah. Well, anyway, nice to meet you anyway. Nice Good luck you. to you, mate. Thank Good you. on you. Thank you. What a nice gentleman. I hope you enjoyed that. Yeah. We, we, well, you got off, you got shot with a shotgun. We fixed it with super glue and activated it. He got blown back with a You can't see the plastic bag. No. It doesn't exist. I don't see it. It doesn't exist, the plastic bag. What are you doing to that weapon? <laughs> <laughs> I do you want to know? <laughs> Making it safe. The, well, yeah, they, they are the most awful <laughs> things to load, believe me. Oh my goodness. Never, it, it's supposed to be a quicker way of using then a flint lock, but. So. <laughs> God, I hate it's this. It's safe now, is it? Got there eventually. Yeah. yeah. So here we are with the Royal Marines Association, which is a charity and they raise money for all different causes. So hello, could you just tell me a little bit about what you what the organisation does? Right, it's uh, Royal Marines Charity. Yep. Uh, any money it goes towards a charity we use for serving former Marines, their families, okay. benevolence. So it's not it's far reaching really. It is indeed. Okay. Quite a large family. So how long has it been going for? Do you know roughly? Ooh, oh, I don't know. In its, well, yes, yeah, goes dates back to forty. Was it forty six? Forty six. Yeah, when it was World first formed as an association to, yeah, to yeah. help people coming back from the war, help Marines coming back from the war. But obviously, the it's changed over the years. I suppose with the with the the problems or that arise in modern warfare, I suppose. Exactly. Yeah. Costly. Costly, very costly. Yeah. Okay. But initially it was set up, wanted to find people coming back from the war jobs. Yep. 
uh, and accommodation, that type of thing. Oh, okay. As time has gone on, that's not the major problem anymore. And camaraderie for the yeah, so, guys. some of the injuries and things that uh, the guys have suffered over recent years from the Second World War on with the conflict. And it's a growing, it's, for instance, yeah, association. It's a growing charity. One of the few. And we enjoy it. Yeah, yeah that's that's mainly. Yeah, thank you very much for that. Thank you.
wait for the recover. Rona, um, why not be looking at... Let's try that again. Shoulder arms. Cover! Um. Try that again, shall we? Shoulder arms. Break! Yesterday there was a silver pickup. Before you get the silver pickup, you'll find two, two or three bags of uh, wood. It won't be a lot of good stuff, I think. I think we'll... So yes, this gentleman's going to explain about the outfit uh, he serves in with, in the Napoleonic period. If I'm not mistaken. Yes, we're the Second Forty Fourth East Essex Regiment, the Second Battalion of the East Essex Regiment. Uh, we were formed in 1803. Uh, to, to help combat against the uh, French imperialists and uh, Yeah, sorry Right, start again. Yeah, no, carry on as you were. Right, we are the 2nd 44th East Essex Regiment the 2nd Battalion of the 44th and we were formed in 1803 and the regiment was actually the battalion was actually formed in Ireland so the majority of the soldiers in the East Essex Regiment were Irish hmm. Uh, we formed in 1803, we started our active life garrisoning, garrisoning the, um, the Channel Islands, primarily on Sark, and then in 1808 we were shipped out to Cadiz to fight the French in the peninsula. We were stationed at Cadiz for a, for a year or so, and then in 1810 we marched round to the lines of Torres Vedras near Lisbon, uh, where we joined the main army. We became part of the 5th Division in the British Army. Uh, the 5th Division are considered to be the unsung heroes of N Wellington's army because basically we did a lot of fighting uh, but we didn't get any accolades, unlike, unlike the guards and the rifles. Um, Why would that be? We're a humble line regiment, we're not glamorous. Uh, you wouldn't, the, the officers in our regiment who had to purchase their commissions wouldn't have had to pay a lot to get a commission in the 44th. Whereas in the cold streams or the rifles, they'd pay an awful lot more in the low thousands. Um, but we were in the, in the peninsula for until 1813. In 1812, our biggest accolade is actually taking a French eagle at the Battle of Salamanca. Uh, in 1813, late 1813, half of the regiment, which was down to 300 men, was shipped back to the UK, to England, to, to, um, to recruit and to refit. And later in the year, the rest of the regiment joined them. The, regiment, the whole regiment was down to about 300 men, from a, from a total of about 700. Wow, devastating blow. Absolutely. Um, strangely enough, the 2nd Battalion of the 44th East Essex Regiment never ever set foot in Essex. Um, but as soon as we were re-equipped, uh, we were shipped out to the low, the low Countries and we took part in the Flanders Campaign, which wasn't particularly successful for British arms and uh, we didn't do very well. In fact, half the regiment, at a place called bergen op -Zoom, over half the regiment was captured by the French and imprisoned. Fortunately later on in 1814 Napoleon abdicated and the troops were released. Is that when he went off to Elba? That's when he went off to Elba, yes. Um, he was on Elba and we were our, our troops were released and then we were stationed in Ostend. Of course in 1815 Napoleon escaped from Elba and the Hundred Days started and led up to the Battle of Waterloo. Unfortunately, the 44th were in the right place at the right time to take part in that fantastic battle. Uh, the 44th were part of the 5th Division again, this time under General Picton, 
and they were t they were stationed on the left of the uh, the battlefield, and they took part in the initial onslaught by um, Derlon's brigade uh, corps, uh, and were involved with the famous charge of the the heavy brigade of the Scots Greys and the Royals, which decimated the. Uh, the French troops, but also decimated themselves. Uh, the 44th then marched on to, after, the, after Waterloo, marched on to Paris, where we were stationed for a while. And then in 1816, we were marched back to uh, Boulogne, where we were shipped out to Dover. And on the, on the docks at Dover, we were disbanded. Oh, right, okay. Did you receive a pension? Most of the troops that were still active were transferred to the 1st Battalion. Officers had the choice of going into the 1st Battalion or transferring or going on half pay. But it's like everything else today, don't need the army anymore, cut it to the bone, get rid of the, the battalions you don't need. So, uh, well, we're members of the 44th East Essex yeah. Regiment of Foot. Um, so I'm a, a junior officer, a subaltern. Um, oh, OK, so you've got this striking hat. So this, this is, if you want, undress. Uh, officers undress. So this is um, when you're not on uh, uh, on duty. Um, you can you can slob out as bit as a young gentleman would. So you, you're expected to have a certain amount of your own style. Um, so. Uh, so you're very decor. Yes, yes. That's uh, that's 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 what I that's what you I can, that's what's expected. You see. You can of, afford uh, leather boots. Uh, yes, yes. They're hessians. So you get the little tassels. If you're very clever, you can get them to swing all the way round. Oh. Um, so, yes. And this is your fine wife, is it? It yes. is, it is. So this is Cecile. And Cecile, what, what sort of period would this be? So this this is post-1812 um, towards 1815 and the, and the Battle of Waterloo. Uh, we've just had a change of uniform. We've just gone to, um, from these, what, from these, uh, flat top, what, they, yeah. well, what some of them call now stovepipes, um, these caps, to a more moderner cap which has got a bit of a false front to it. Oh, okay. Um, which, uh, so would this be Cecile's sort of environment to look after? Well, the tent or <laughs> yeah, I suppose, <laughs> to, to <laughs> the campaign tent. The yeah. camp has had a strange um, uh, sort of role within the army at the time. Um, they didn't like too many camp followers because they mm. sort of cluttered up the army and slowed them down yeah. and made a well, long the baggage train. Today, so. But as yeah, I mean, <laughs> as the baggage only train as such. Uh, yes, <laughs> but as, as the only as the only the only lady here, yeah. um, it's always good to have a have a have a lady here to keep us all in control. Yes. Yeah. So do, yes, do, do, do you cook for the gentleman, Cecile? No, because I'm uh, being a officer wife. I, I don't do the cook. So okay. normally we would have. If we have, uh, yeah. If we, yeah. If we normally have a, we we have other la other women who do the. Oh, okay. Cooking, but so as a, as an officer's wife, you would have privileges just, as well. Yeah. So okay. I, I don't do that bit. I just wander around, go from tent to having tea. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a hard life. <laughs> like a lady. Yes. Yes. So. Mm. So how, can I ask how long you've been doing? Are you living history or reenactment? Because I'm never quite sure. I, 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 mean, I, guess I we don't. Do a bit of both because, yeah, I yeah, suppose. Yeah, the tent is living history. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a thin dividing line, really, yeah. isn't it? I mean, we're, I'm learning as I go along. Yeah, no, no, it's very good actually. I like that. What's, I guess what, we what say are we do you? reenacting. We always say we do reenacting, but may I look inside the yeah, tent? Yeah, yeah, sure, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, you know. The wind has pretty, pretty yeah. clear. Oh well. So there's a lot of work gone into this. Yeah, I enjoy that bit setting up the scene. Yeah, you know, it's yeah, it's dressing it, isn't it? Yes, yeah. yeah. give me something to do while they do the marching and the. Okay. Oh, very heavy. Yeah, yeah, they made out of lead, I guess. Uh, lead dice. Yeah, we like to play the game, so we make sure they all like, you know, as as oh, wow. correct. Again, the problem with being an officer is, is if there's any men to chop wood, they should be chopping wood. And if there's any men to make food, they should be. Making. The officer shouldn't be caring for the men. You know, it should be the other way around. So sometimes. Yeah, yeah, you can be advantage. I can, uh, I can take the advantage there. Um, three, four, three, four. That's pretty, pretty easy. One, two, three, four, and three. Uh, one, two, no. One, two, three. It's a silly move. So I'm anyway. black now. Yeah.
I reckon that's optimistic. Okay, so if you could tell us a little bit about what your outfit does, on a, you know, on a yearly basis, these hmm. sort of events. Well, the 44 East Essex are um, an infantry unit of the Napoleonic Wars. We're also members of an umbrella organisation called the Napoleonic Association. Okay. And the Napoleonic Associ Associate, put my teeth in. Yeah. The uh, Napoleonic Association encompasses infantry, rifles, cavalry, and artillery. It's an overall umbrella organisation throughout the country. Um, and we get together at events like this, which is just the 44th, to get together with other units, and we put on mock battles, skirmishes, and anything like that. We've also got French units within the association. There are some strange British people that want to play French. <laughs> okay. And many of them are very good friends. Okay. <laughs> um, but they're very strange. Okay. And, uh, and our big thing is to, we meet up possibly three to four times a year at uh, various events put on by the Napoleon Association and they are generally mock battles um, and if we've got the French there and if it's if it's not if it's not representing a, a battle that actually happened then on the Saturday the British will win on the Sunday the French will win or vice versa they got the French have got to win something yeah of course um, the other big thing for us is, of course, we, we, we travel generally into Europe regularly, or most years. Uh, obviously, the big event for us is uh, Waterloo, and there's a reenactment at Waterloo in Belgium every year. Uh, but every fifth year is a big year, and they tend to be probably 2,000, 1,500, 2,000 reenactors. Uh, but obviously, back in 2015, which was the 200th anniversary of Waterloo, we had nearly 4,000 reenactors. Uh, both sides equally matched. The Allies about 2,000, the French about 2,000. We had 350 cavalry, 80 cannon, and over the weekend there were 130,000 spectators. Did you take part in that? Did I? <laughs> it was amazing. It was amazing. It, as a reenactor, as a Napoleonic reenactor, the Waterloo Bicentennial was was the Holy Grail. So, really, the 44th is is, is very much a family. Uh, we've got people from all over the country. We have a strong base in Essex, of course, uh, but we've got people from Suffolk, Norfolk, Northamptonshire, Brighton, London. People come from all over because we only really get together at our events. Um, and most of our events are held in the UK, uh, predominantly in the southeast, but we do uh, often travel further north and further south. Um, and we're always looking for new members. Uh, it, it's for the family, if the whole family want to be involved. Um, the, uh, the, the soldiers are always men, um, because we try and keep the... Um, we try to keep it as, as historically, uh, accurate. historically accurate as possible. Um, but ladies in, in, in the unit can have a, um, a job because the wives always followed, they were always wives following the, the army. Uh, the officers' wives, as, you can, as you've seen earlier on, the officers' wives uh, have quite a good life. Um, or if a lady wants to be able to shoot at people, uh, they can always become. Portuguese or Spanish party dance. Oh, there you go. So um, I, I should put your link on the website, is that okay? That's or fine, on the, on the yeah. Website. It's um, we're, we're in the process of creating a new website at the moment, but there is a holding page here at the moment. Okay. And it's um, www.facecreative... That's my old company firm. <laughs> you don't want my old company. www.44thessex.co.uk or .com. Uh, we've also got a Facebook page for the Essex Regiment and we've got an Instagram page as well. Okay. Uh, so if anybody was interested in joining, hiring us, we do a lot of film work by the way, um, get in touch with us and we'll get back to them as quick as we can. We don't let recruits off the hook easily. Thank you very much. Thank you.
two lovely ladies here. We've got a married lady from married the to union. A, from the Union and a lady who's a widow from the Confederacy. Is that right? The Confederacy. Yes. And this lovely lady has made this food. Could you tell us a bit about what you've made here? Well, this is just bread pudding. They would have something similar, you know, to use up the stale bread. bread. Oh, okay. So, uh, so it's making use of what you had? Yeah, yeah. Didn't want to waste anything. There wasn't much about, was there? No. And you've obviously got your apple pie. Apple pie they would have had. Mm. And they would have done things like that so with like oats. Oh, that's an oat. Sort of jackfruit. Yeah. Jackfruit. Would you mind telling us how long you've been reenactors? Are you reenactors or living history? I think I've been doing it for about 12, 13 years now. Wow. So I play, my, play my husband. Right. <laughs> and, my, and my apple pie you were about. Yeah, on. that was it. Blame Carol. Is he <laughs> okay. Yeah. Carol, you've been doing it a lot longer? Yeah, 25 years this year. Wow. And you actually got married. You were telling me earlier, you actually got married. With a uh, we had an American Civil War wedding at Highland Ham 2000. Oh, wow. Must be something special. That was fantastic, yeah. But it was. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. <coughs> Completely irrelevant. Oh, <laughs> no, tell, <laughs> me about your long period. tell me about your black powder then. So, yeah, it... Because you know you you have the way the way they worked out um, how much powder required in Civil War weapons and they still do it mm. today is by the weight of the bullet. So you need a lot of gunpowder, which is where your cartridge paper comes from, because that's oh, what okay. it was originally for. That's where you buy it off in your mouth. Yeah, yeah. And of course, we repeated firing. I think the the average uh, amount of ammunition a soldier carried in the Civil War, I think about sixty rounds. And you could get through that fairly fast. You're talking a couple of minutes. Sixty uh, rounds. Sixty rounds, and you know within a couple of minutes when you think about some of the bigger battles especially like Fredericksburg you know if you're holding the stone wall uh, at Murray's Heights you're going to run through 20 that minutes, 20 minutes far in that yeah, could you're going to run out quite furiously. quickly but with that you also get the fouling that comes from black powder because it's it's really really coarse powder it's not like you know the modern uh, ammunition propellant that you get in modern bullets it is thick coarse black powder uh, so it, it, it fouls quite quickly the way we normally clean it out is by using like, boiling hot water, pour it out, and it comes out through like the percussion cap nipple. Um, but obviously, back in the day, exactly. you couldn't do that. Oh, okay. So, uh, so it comes out of there. Th there are there are stories of soldiers. Where's the nipple bit? Yeah. Oh, there, a tiny little thing. Yeah. Oh, it's like yeah. boiling hot water down the barrel. Yeah. yeah. And so, there are stories though of soldiers actually, especially you know, in the heat of battle, actually using urine, so peeing down the barrel. To actually clean it out quite quickly because the, the so um, desperate the, the acid would actually help unclog the gunpowder, but then of course you'd have to sort of swab the barrel out to dry it out before you put any more powder. So down. where do you learn about a fact like that? Is it written down? Is it? It's, yeah, it's documented. I mean, there are a lot of books on the subject of the American Civil War. And there's, a, there's a lot of good uh, diaries as well. Uh, one of the best ones was written by a, a guy called Sam Watkins, who was a private in the First Tennessee Infantry. Uh, he survived the war and fought all the way through the war. He went um, everywhere, didn't he? Yeah, he, he was mostly in like the Trans-Mississippi, so he was at Shiloh. Uh, I think he fought at Chickamauga as well, at Missionary Ridge. Um, but his diary is one of the best from the point of view of just a basic private you know, in the Civil War. Um, it's just, and he, they promoted him to corporal and he said because he accidentally picked up a flag during battle, he picked up a, a Yankee flag. And he freely admits that it was because he needed something to patch the, the seat of his trousers. An officer saw it and thought, right, I'll promote that man to corporal. You deserve to. Yes. Yes. I've tried. basically made a charcoal, sulphur and uh, a nitrate. Okay. That's all it is. It's, a, it's not a compound, it's a mixture. You actually mill it. You've got to grind it and sort of make it wet and squash it all together and make tiny little pieces. Oh, and you the, don't have any on you now? That we yeah, don't have any powder, no, but no. you've got bullets, haven't you? You've got, I've got one. what the actual well, bullet was like. You, I, can show you, bullet. I can show you what a bullet... Oh, thank you. I'll show you what a, a certain type of bullet looks like, if it's in here somewhere. Here we go. The two, this the is two, only a mock-up, yeah. but what oh, you'd have is the cartridge with the gunpowder in it. Yeah. This is this is just uh, um, 
a twisted piece of, of paper back. And that is a mini aid ball. That would be greased here. And you would drop that into the rifle. So that's the actual bullet? Yeah, so it's a, it's a, that's a lump of lead. Actually yeah, it's in, in, the, the, in the little there, grooves, it? yeah. Some bullets didn't have that. They actually had a paper patch on them, which was... It's quite weighty, isn't it? Yeah. So if you foul up the, the, the rifle in the... In them was quite shallow mm. and if you fired it enough you wouldn't be fight in effect firing a rifle you'd be firing a smooth bore because it never grip the rifle in and rotate the bullet oh, wow. so yeah they so they, you wouldn't want to get hit by that no 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 because <laughs> no, it, it's got a lot of power behind it yeah a lot of thanks guys it a lot of power but it probably not penetration like a modern round because they're obviously smaller yeah. caliber and they're going a lot, lot faster. I mean, these are about, what, about over, just over a thousand feet per second yeah. when they come out the barrel. And they would have a, quite a high trajectory uh, to drop in on the target at distance. Can you show me the bayonet, please, to, to be fixed? It's quite interesting to see that. So that's quite long, it's about 14 inches, isn't it? Well, know. yes, so it's a, a piece of kit, isn't it? Yeah. I'll have to wipe it off now. I'll get paranoid about it. Oh, what's that? what the acid? Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Now you got to look after your equipment. Yeah, how do you get it off? Is there a little lever on there? Is it? Oh, it's just a, oh, just twist it around. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's one method. There are other methods, but on these, that bayonet actually is is for a, a, an American type of rifle, Springfield, but it fits on the on the uh, three band Enfield. Okay. So, can I ask you also, is your group, uh, your outfit looking for volunteers in the future? Yes. If they Absolutely. would, because, yes. so yeah, if yeah, I put your, right. if I was to put your, um, your link on the, on the video, yep. that would be good? Yeah, yeah I, I think so. Oh, yeah. I know. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think anybody moaned about it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, especially okay, as spare kids, so sometimes yeah. just want, people want to try for a day. It's very straightforward. So really you can just come along and try. They, they come around. Usually there is enough kit yeah. around, yeah. and they can be fitted and and be on the battlefield. Obviously, if they have license, they can come yeah. under muskets. But otherwise, they can come straight. Uh, you know, carry the flags or play the drums. And yeah, they like can that. be part of the assisting team. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, that's when I joined. I knew yeah. several people that were in Soscan many oh, years okay. ago, and first two events I went to I didn't have a gun I was just looking to see how it was I yeah. didn't have a musket <laughs> that's it and uh, next year I bought well I'm having one of these so <laughs> you won it all don't yeah, you yeah 40 years later I'm still messing about doing it <laughs> how long 40 40 years yeah well wow, you're really into it <laughs> It's yeah, and if, if you are serious, it's, it's definitely a suggestion, isn't it? You, if, you, if you're going to make it a, a, a proper hobby, yeah, apply for you, not only your shotgun certificate, uh, if you're going to get rifled muskets as well, get, get your firearm certificate, but also your black powder certificate as well. So obviously that would come at later stages, wouldn't it? You know, when you get more involved. Yeah, yeah if you want to, you know, if my recommendation is if you want to enjoy yourself the most, get a musket. Because... It was all right when I didn't have a musket, I could carry the flag, but it was far, far better firing my musket. <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah. Well, there is some deactivated muskets, so there's a, a stage where you can be in the ranks with a fake... Yeah. Okay. A fake ...that look like the, the they things. They just weren't around at the time. Yes. No. But uh, as soon as you start to fire that for real, yeah. that's, yeah, that's, that's it. it. Yeah. You're hooked. There's no going yeah. back. Yeah, there's no, no going back. No going back. You're better off having a smooth ball because it's a shotgun knife. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, yeah. it's easier, easier to obtain. Yeah. And the effect yeah. is the same. It's probably easier to clean as well because all those little shallow rifling grooves. Yeah. Yeah. More than likely. Yeah. All right, well, thanks for your time, and I'll let you get on with your conversation no, about thank black you. powder. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> oh, we, also, we, we also discussed muons. Who? Muons. You got me there. Oh, it's, it's a weird particle. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and aliens. And <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's an eclectic conversation. Yeah, it's eclectic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got yeah. another day, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, see you later. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you, mate. You're welcome. Uh, and we
Well, I hope you enjoyed that and thank you very much.